Hi everyone and welcome to this first installment in a new series of videos where I make some display bases for miniatures. Firstly, apologies for the overexposure here. It's not the worst thing that's ever been overexposed on the internet, but anyway, on with it. This was a base I made on a disc of MDF, 10cm by 10cm, with some extruded polystyrene foam on the top, and then I started making some bricks out of the same extruded 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 foam and the foam this particular foam is just insulation boards that I got from a local um, hardware store or home improvement store um, so I make these bricks uh, they're roughly seven millimeters by I don't know three millimeters something like that I made quite a few of them but I made them all in different sizes to be honest and then I got a drinks can this isn't the stuff I usually drink by the way I've just been rather tired recently and I wrapped that in some sellotape because I thought well if the worst comes to the worst then I can just take the sellotape off um, rather than having it stick to the can um, now this is a good tip take the bottom off the can and use it as a dispenser for your glue. I saw this on Adam Savage's Tested, um, which I thought was a very good tip. So there we go. And I just rough up the surface because it's got a very smooth surface, this particular polystyrene. And I put the can on there and I sellotape the can to the surface at the front. Now I want to leave the back not sellotaped because now I'm going to start gluing these bricks in place. So I just dip them in there and I make sure I hold the bricks with the tweezers on the edges usually, well I didn't there look, but usually on the corner or edge of the piece um, like that. Um, I'm pointing at the screen here, you can't see. Um, because it enables me to uh, position them uh, better, basically, and also um, it's got less of a grip than over the entire thing, um, because these two edges only have a very narrow aperture. Uh, and now I'm making a window. For this, I uh, cut some at an angle, uh, cut some of these bricks at an angle, and I had a devil's own job getting these on there. You can say, oh dear, it's falling to pieces. Uh, never mind. I did it eventually, and I added a keystone piece at the top. Now, I didn't want this to look overly realistic because it's a, a fantasy ruin, really. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I wanted it to look reasonably good. Um, and um, I'm going to be, I was going over this now with some uh, undiluted Mod Podge just to seal everything together because it's very fragile as you can see it bending there and then I just clean up some of the flashes. And it's not particularly necessary because now we're going to be adding a few extra bricks into the gaps. Just press them into place, they've got a bit of Mod Podge applied to them too. Uh, a bit more clearing up, a bit more shaping, actually, in this case, of, of the bricks. Um, digging out a few ruts here and there, a few knocks. Um, and now I start cutting some uh, much thinner pieces. Uh, are these going to be flagstones for the, the bottom of the ruin, so the floor of the ruin if you like and I don't want these to look again too ultra realistic because ruin you know flagstones they move around over time and all these bricks it's supposed to be slightly collapsing this whole thing and, and slight fantasy element to it um, and now I'm gonna mix some plaster of Paris in with some Mod Podge mat um, and this is going to create a quite nice foam coat um, and also a texturing paste for the ruin itself um, and I apply this with a brush and it fills in all the gaps nicely while also leaving uh, the, the the lines or the, the, the kind of cement lines uh, in place uh, some of them you may need to go back and re kind of uh, score out with your knife um, and now I'm going to start painting the bricks and I want to do this individually so I've just got some cheap acrylics here these actually these cheap acrylics from craft stores are actually quite good they've got quite a good high, a quite high pigment count in them 
Um, so I'm using some flesh tones, some greens, some greys, a bit of yellow in there. And this is going to look horribly bright um, for a while. But just make sure when you paint the bricks that you get the, the brick the same colour on the other side of the ruin because otherwise it will just look ridiculous. Um, I'm going to end up covering all of this lot in a lot of um, vines and things, uh, so it won't really matter. Uh, now I'm going to make some homemade black wash and I use some black acrylic ink, some matte varnish and some isopropanol from CFS. Uh, if you go to their website and enter the code Hi i10, you will get a 10% discount uh, from them and they do top quality supplies uh, for mold making etc. Now this uh, black wash you can just apply fairly liberally over it all. Um, if you find it's too thick at the beginning, you know, just test it out on a bit of the model first um, and then dilute it with more isopropanol. Uh, some Vallejo thick European mud, nice hand work there or camera work hand in way. Um, that will form the basis of the earth and now some weathering powders uh, to go over the ruins. Uh, you can see that black wash has really tied all those colours together and now this weathering powder you want to go very sparing with it because this pigmentation count in this is enormous so it will completely drown your model if you're not careful so you want to go very gently with it. Um, a bit of water on the, the powder. You can use the powder neat as well, depends what kind of texture you want. Um, it could just add a nice granular texture for this, I just want it to, uh, to look a bit grimy. And now I'm dry brushing the piece to bring out all of the edges. As I say, this is going to be covered in these vines which I make using jute twine. So what I do is I take a piece, this is just the kind of garden twine you can get um, in pretty much anywhere, pound stores or dollar stores, whatever, wherever you are, that's what they're called. Um, I just pick apart the strands and then I basically coat them in Mod Podge and just wrap them where I feel is going to look good. And I use the Mod Podge mat again um, because it dries completely matte, so you don't really notice it. Um, you know, the glue spots, etc. So now I'm just uh, applying these vines and I'm an extra kind of bushy vine down there which is again just a piece of uh, the twine which I've kind of unraveled and scrambled all the pieces um, make some very nice strands and then I go around the edge with some more of the thick mud and while that thick mud is still wet I press in some more vines around the edge and carry on doing so it's a very fiddly process but it's very rewarding and now I'm going to be using some knock leaves with some Mod Podge. I'm still using that beer, that beer, it's not beer, it's not beer, can, lid, it's almost as bad as beer, probably worse than beer in many ways. Um, and I'm going to start uh, just painting this Mod Podge, um, this is ever so slightly diluted actually, I hope I didn't film that, over those vines and then I'm going to be sprinkling over the leaves so they only stick to the to the vines and it makes a very nice kind of ivy look and now meadow matte beige 12 millimeter gauge master stroke knock uh, matting this is easily torn off and um, you just want s several small pieces basically and it's so much easier to use this matting than to use a static grass applicator because you get much thicker they've got industrial static grass applicators you know and it's much thicker pieces of 12 mil and I wanted really nice long uh, bits of grass I didn't go for green here because when do you ever really see long grass being green no it's pretty much dead you know long grass gets that long it gets uh, green. Those are a bit of, uh, it gets beige rather. Those are two failed experiments there. I was using some woodland scenics field grass but it didn't work out so I took it off. But I did use some woodland scenics fine leaf foliage which is a good go-to product and you can see that's got a bit of glue on it there because I actually, there we go, tip on some more knock leaves, tip on, sprinkle on. I'm much more delicate than tipping. And that was it. I was very happy with it. I hope you liked it. It's quite a fiddly little build, but I think the results are well worth the effort. 
and this technique can also be used to create other buildings of course other ruins here I've got a square one as you can see I was quite happy with how this turned out again that's just on a piece of 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter MDF board with some extruded polystyrene on top and then followed the same techniques as for my round base thank you very much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video I like making it see you next time